Okay. So uh, don't forget there's an exam today. Um, I also pushed the, uh, the due date for the web work number two out by a day, just for the sake of, <clears throat> well, for no reason at all, really. Um, okay, so uh, today I'm going to start talking about um, the existence and uniqueness theorem, the kind of specialization of this theorem for first order linear ODEs. So we get a particularly nice result there. Um, that probably is not going to take up all, all the time that we have for today. So I'm, I'm probably going to start on the next topic, which is going to be Bernoulli. So I will uh, start up the board. So, um, so far we've looked at a couple of different methods for solving first order uh, linear initial value problems. So what we have for uh, first order linear initial value problem is, y prime equals p of x, y equals q of x. And we have some initial condition, y of x zero equals y zero. So this is some point in the plane which our solution passes through. Now, we talked about before why, um, if we have, uh, let's assume that we have P and Q are continuous on some interval AB. Which contains zero. So we talked about before that we get immediately from this that there exists a solution to this. Sorry, I realize I left these lines up and it's kind of hard to see me. A lot of light that comes through here and it makes it difficult to see. Okay, that's probably a little better. So, um, uh, let's say. Oh, so if we look at this in the in the form of a um, just the general form that we had for first order ODEs, we could rewrite y prime as equal to f f of x y, and um, we had these two conditions on f that it was continuous and that the partial with respect to y is continuous in some region around x0. So if we rewrite our first order linear ODE in this form, we get that f of x, y is just equal to q of x minus of x, y, and this is continuous because um, the, the product and the sum of continuous functions is continuous. So we're just putting together continuous functions in a way that they're still continuous. So we get that continuity. And then if we look at the partial of f with respect to y, um, this q of x just goes to zero because it's not in terms of y at all. And this p of x times y just goes to p of x. So the partial derivative of f with respect to y is just p of x. which we assumed was continuous. So 
that immediately tells us that a solution exists and is unique in some interval, we'll call it uh, CD, contains the solution of, we write the solution as y of x, so it's the function of x. So it's, un, it's existent as unique in some interval contained inside our original bigger interval, so a, b. And a, b, the interval which means zero. Actually, it, it has to be contained in this. Now, uh, this was a, a fairly mild result. We, get, we actually get something much stronger for the case of a linear ODE, linear first order ODE. And that is, um, well, it actually comes from the way that we solved this. So if we, we can go through this, these steps either way, I'm gonna go through the, the way that we got the solution in terms of the homogeneous part and then the non-homogeneous part. So first we got the homogeneous part. Uh, that was the solution to y star prime plus the x y star is equal to zero. So we drop the non-homogeneous part, which is this q of x. Right, we just assume that it's zero and get a solution. So this should be simpler. In fact, it is. Um, this is separable. So it definitely has a solution because we know how to get one. Um, we say that, um, first of all, y star is equal to zero is our stationary solution. Right, we get that from just looking at when, when we get, um, well, we can just subtract this over to the other side. And we see that when y prime is equal to zero, y, or sorry, y star is equal to zero, we have y star prime is equal to zero. And so the solution does change. The derivative is zero. So we get that, we get our stationary solution immediately. And so, um, this allows us to say that our y star, our other solutions are non-zero in a, b, right? Because our stationary solution is the only one that goes through zero. So this is never zero anywhere inside our interval a, b. And in fact, we know exactly what y star is. This is equal to e to the negative integral of e of x dx. And we know that um, the e to the power of any real number is positive. And so this never ends up zero. Now in the general form, we would write this as the, we, we would write a constant in front of and say uh, that constant can be anything. And when we set that constant equal to zero, that just corresponds to our stationary solution. So that's when y star is zero. So everything kind of fits together nicely in that framework. If we wanted a, we wanted a general homogeneous solution or a particular homogeneous solution that was negative, we would set that c equal to negative, and then it would be negative always. It would never cross into the positive part because it never goes to zero. Okay. What's more, we know that um, the integral of a continuous function is continuous. We actually have something slightly stronger than this. We know that the integral of a continuous function is differentiable, but we'll just, we'll use the property that is continuous. Uh, furthermore, we know that the exponential 
of a continuous I'm going to abbreviate continuous and function take a little time to write the exponential of a continuous function is continuous and so what we get is that y star is continuous so we get that our homogeneous solution is itself continuous Okay. And of, of course, we're, we're talking about conti continuity on this interval A, B. So we'll, we really mean it's continuous. But it's continuous on that entire interval. So it's continuous all the way from the beginning. Um, I'm, don't let me scroll. Okay. There. Okay. So next, uh, we find. Uh, u of x so that y of x equals u of x y star of x is our general non-homogeneous solution. Okay. So this involved figuring out what u of x was. And we, we saw what well, this was called a variation of parameters, by the way. And what we saw is uh, this is this is replacing the that constant that we would have normally for our homogeneous solution. So we replace that constant with some function of x. And then we try to solve for that function to figure out our general solution. So that's variation. And what we worked out was that u of x is just equal to the integral of q of x over y star of x dx plus some constant. So this is some antiderivative. And this constant is uniquely determined by our initial condition. Now, an easy way to see this, that when we chose that antiderivative of Q of X over Y star of X, um, we can choose any um, any uh, antiderivative that we want, and so a particularly nice one to choose is the integral from x zero to x q of s or y star of s ds. I'm just using s as a dummy variable here, so that in the end I end up with something that's a function of x, and this x zero is our initial that part of our initial condition. So I set this equal to plus C, I call that U of X. And so that when I, what I get is U of X zero is equal to uh, just C. And then if I do the same trick for our Y star, where was that? Right here, I say from X zero to X, and I do the integration with a dummy factor, yes. Then y star of, of x zero, x zero is equal to one. And so what we get is y of x zero is equal to c times one, or just c. And so that's equal to y zero. So if we use these special antiderivatives, then what we get is that that constant is just y zero. So more, more generally, we can say that it's just uniquely determined. So we know exactly what it is. And we know what this, oh, well, this integral is uniquely determined um, up to a constant. So we know what the constant is. And furthermore, again, we have u of x is continuous because it's the integral of a continuous function. We had 
of x is continuous here. And this denominator here, y star, that's also continuous because of what we said before, but it's also non-zero in that entire interval. And so if we never get a zero in the denominator for that integrand. And so this is a, an integral of a continuous function. And so we get that u of x is continuous. And so y of x is equal to u of x times y prime of x is continuous. Because as we said before, the product of continuous functions is continuous as well. And so this is continuous in the entire interval a, b. And we put this all together in a single statement. And we will call this one the existence and uniqueness theorem for first order linear. Well, we say ODEs, but I'm going to write initial value problems because we're really looking at unique solutions for initial value, not for ODEs in general. In general, we do not have a unique solution. Um, it only becomes unique when it's determined by our initial solution. Because we saw those slope fields. There's lots of different ways that we can sort of swoop through those slope fields and get different solutions. But once we pick a point that the solution has to go through, then we get a unique one. So let's write this out. Let P of X and Q of X be two continuous functions on the interval A, B. Then the initial value problem y prime plus p of x, y equals q of x, and the initial condition y of x zero equals y zero has a unique solution y of x or any x zero in that interval a b where those functions are continuous and any y zero any real y zero this Solution is continuous on all of A, B. So if we pick the biggest interval on which our functions are continuous, P and Q, if they're both continuous on this big interval, then we know our solution is, exists and is unique on that entire interval as well. Okay. So, uh, that's nice. Uh, we also, there's, there's a couple of slight strengthenings that we can make this um, as well. So instead of just saying continuous, we could actually say that the solution is differentiable, which is a little bit stronger than saying it. Not only is it continuous, but we could also take its derivative. And that should be clear from looking at the fact that these are all in terms of integrals, and products, and we know how to take the derivative of integrals, take the derivative of products, but we should be able to get the derivative of the solution. Um, another slight strengthening, which I'm not going to write down, I'll just mention, is that if P and Q are not, not even continuous, but just integrable, so we can find their integral. So you remember back to calculus two, we looked at functions that weren't continuous completely, but they were just piecewise continuous and we could still compute their integrals, right? So we can do all of that. We can still compute all of these integrals. 
And what we get at the, at the end is a solution that is even more than integrable. It's continuous, it's actually continuous. This process of doing the integral has the, has the effect of kind of smoothing things out a little bit. So it, uh, it actually makes our solutions a little bit nicer than the things that we started off. Okay. So that only took up 20 minutes of class. So I guess we will definitely move to the next subject. I'll just pause for questions really quick and for me to take a water break. Make sure not to break eye contact with the camera while I'm drinking water. All right, so if there's no questions, we'll move on to uh, Bernoulli equations. Single scroll. So that's our next topic. Bernoulli equation. Okay, so these are special ODEs. These are their first order ODEs. They are nonlinear. But their homogeneous version or very young. Their homogeneous version is linear. And so just like in this previous um, in this previous subject, looking at the linear first order ODEs, we can look we can look at the homogeneous version of these. Well, I should write down what they are first, um, so it makes more sense. Uh, so, y prime plus d of x y is equal to u of x y to the r, and we make the assumption that r is not equal zero or one because then they would be, the equation would be it would be a linear OD. So we make the assumption that R is not zero. So I didn't I didn't finish writing my sentence there. Okay, so this is a, another class of ODEs. Um, these are named after a little historical note here. These are named after Jacob Bernoulli, who's a very famous and prolific mathematician. And he first wrote about these in 1695. And to just give you some kind of context, um, Newton and Leibniz were doing their initial sort of formalization of calculus. The idea of calculus splitting problems up into infinitely many small, simple problems and then putting them together is an idea that's existed for thousands of years. And that's basically the central idea of calculus. We take a, a difficult problem, you know, what is the shape, what is the volume of this thing? And then we change it into simple problems. We make slices of it and those slices are simple shapes simple geometric shapes that we know how to get the volume of, and then we add them all together in the integral. So that's the basic idea of calculus, taking a, yeah, a hard problem, breaking it down, infinitely many simple problems. So that idea has existed for a lot, for thousands of years, as far as we can tell. Um, but it was only around the, from about 1660 to 1670, that Newton and Leibniz um, started formalizing this and making a, a, a complete system out of it that we stay call. So that's just to give you an idea of how things progressed fairly quickly once uh, people had a notation to write these things down. You know, within a, a couple of decades, people were coming up with all sorts of questions and answers to them as well. So we're going to look at solving this. I, I don't know what happened there. We're going to look at solving this using 
variation of parameters, just like we did for the previous version. So that's looking at a, at a homogeneous version of this and then multiplying that solution or replacing the constant of integration with that function. Okay. Now I'll point out that Leibniz was the first one to come up with a solution to this. Um, and his solution was not the, the, not the method that we're going to use right now. He didn't use variation of parameters. He used a different method, which we will talk about next time called uh, substitution or substitution variable. Um, but we end up getting the same thing. Of course, as we know, we have this existence and uniqueness theorem. So even, even if we had what seemed to be radically different solution, we know that we don't get the solution because the solution is unique. Okay, so um, let's get started on this. So it starts off in a very similar way. We're going to just look at setting this. We think of this kind of as the non-homogeneous term. We set that equal to zero and we get a solution. And of course, that's exactly the same for y prime plus p of x. y is equal to zero. Um, we get All right, I lost my train of thought. Call this Y star. So we'll call this Y star and um, the solution that we get, the homogeneous solution is equal to just like four E to the minus the antiderivative P of X dx. Or Y star is equal to zero. We have two This is, of course, our, as always, when we have separable equations, our stationary solution, because this is separable, like I said before. So at this point, nothing has changed. Um, we look for y of x equal to u of x, y star of x, because, of course, we have a kind of c that we're um, leaving out here. And so we're replacing that C with the U of X. That's the variation of parameters part. The C is the parameter that we bear. <clears throat> and so we plug this back into our initial thing. So first of all, I'll write that um, Y star prime. We can use the product rule to get this U prime Y star plus U Y star prime. Something new there. And so when we look at y, sorry, y prime plus p of x y, this is equal to u prime y star plus u y star prime. So that's the that's the y prime. Made a mistake. That should have been. It should be y prime because we're taking the derivative of this thing. So that's not bad. Okay, so um, we have uh, y prime plus p of x y is equal to u prime y star plus u y star prime, and um, we actually know what y star prime. Is. Oh, I should write this plus p of x. So this is uh, we know what y star prime is because that's this. And so what we get is that this is equal to minus, take the derivative of e to the x, it's just e to the x multiplied by the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of the integral is of course minus p of x. And the original thing was e to the minus integral of e of x dx, which is just minus p of x y star. So now I can rewrite this as u prime y star plus u y star prime, which is minus, uh, let's see, minus p e of x u y star. 
And now this P of X times Y, that Y is U I star. Okay. So this, our left-hand side turns out to just be U I star. So this part right here, I'm sorry, uh, this part right here. So that's our left-hand side. And of course, our right-hand side is U of X times Y to the R, which is U to the R, Y star the R. Roll up a little bit. I'm gonna pause just for a second. If anybody's still writing, let's take a moment to grab another water also. Looks like everybody's good. Can't see everybody. Let me expand my window. There we go. Always happy to see everyone. Okay, so now we solve for uh, U prime, and we get U prime is equal to Q of X, U to the R y star the r minus one i'm going to rewrite this in a uh, mathematically suggestive way i will write u to the r in front and then i'll bracket together q of x y star of r minus one and why is this you might have a guess already in the back of your mind um u to the r is just a function of u and q of x, y star to the r minus one. Because y star is a function of x, this is just function of x. And now we do, you know, kind of, I see some smiles, so maybe some people already know where I'm going with this. We'll rewrite U, U prime as du dx. And we have a function just in terms of u, and we have a function just in terms of x. And so we can rewrite this as du over u to the r is equal to U of X, Y star to the R minus one, the X, integrate both sides. Of course, what I'm describing is solving a separable ODE. So we have separated our variables. We are solving a separable ODE. And at this point, it going going forward at this point, we're we're looking at what specifically is Q of X and uh, Y star, which How oh, um, far are we into class? We have 26 minutes left. Okay, so that's enough time to do at least one example. Anyway, uh, oh, and I'll write this as plus C. We're, we're gonna have a constant integration here that's gonna be determined by our initial conditions. So I might as well just throw it in just for the sake of remembering. But anyway, this is a separable ODE that we solved just like any other. So this is separable. So we've taken a Calc 4 problem and we've reduced it to a Calc 1 problem and a Calc 2 problem. That's progress. All right, I will, let's switch to, uh, let's switch to green. No, blue. We'll do an example in blue. Maybe, maybe I will just wait one second.
interesting thing to note here is, oh, well, this example is going to have the R be a, um, being an integer. And so, you know, it's, it has kind of a nice form, the R minus one, some integer. But we really could um, have R be any real number, um, including something that would make R minus one negative. Because we know that that y star, we have the stationary solution, which is y star is equal to zero. And then we have all of our other solutions, which never pass through zero. So even if that exponent is negative, we don't get any division by zero. So that's particularly nice. We, in other words, we have the same sort of result that we can talk about. Um, well, at least this integral right here, sort of fairly nicely. Okay. Enough stalling, let's do an example. Y star plus two Y X Y squared. So this is our example. And in this example, we have, I'm gonna go ahead and write out some of the beginning of this problem. We have p of x is equal to two, yes. We have q of x is equal to e to the x. And we have r is equal to two. We have all of our pieces that we need in order to solve a Bernoulli equation. And um, this one did not come with initial condition. So we'll just get the general solution. I'm going to stop talking for a little while and let you give this a shot for yourself. Of course, I'll come back in a minute, work through it. You can come back to my solution.
kind of looks like some people uh, might have a solution. Does my microphone sound any better right now? I'm trying this headphones to see if that is it sounds better. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think Zoom's trying to do some kind of like active cancellation to make sure that there's no feedback. Maybe this will help. I can't hear myself. Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's give this a shot. So for the uh, what we're calling the homogeneous solution, this will be e to the negative integral of p of x dx, which is of course just e to the minus two x. Uh, or we have y prime is equal to zero, which is r. Okay, now in order to get u prime, uh, this will be equal to I totally skipped something here. Did I? No, I didn't. I don't think I skipped something. I think I got it all. Okay, so anyway, we have for u prime u squared. So that's u to the r. And then e to the x times our homogeneous solution, which is e to the minus 2x. And so this is just equal to u squared e to the minus x, which I will rewrite as du dx. So far, so good. Now, what we have is du over u squared, which uh, is fairly easy to, to integrate. And we have e to the minus x dx, which is even easier to pick, right? Or maybe just easy. And this gives us uh, minus 1 over u is equal to negative e to the minus x plus some function. Sorry, I got distracted. There's a cat walking around. There's like a whole litter of cats, a whole litter of like, they're not kittens anymore, like recently born. And there, there's like six or seven cats walking around this building. Um, now, okay, so I'll, I'll multiply both sides by negative one, just get one over u is equal to e to the minus x minus c. Take the reciprocal of both sides, I get u to one over e to the minus x minus c. And of course, c is just a, an arbitrary constant. And so we can just rewrite this as plus c instead of minus c, just for the sake of our sanity. So e to the minus x plus c, and that's u. OK? So what we get in the end is y of x is equal to x y star of x, which is e minus 2x over e to the minus x plus c, which can be re rewritten 1 over e x plus e to the 2x c, c e to the 2x. <clears throat> so there's our solution. Very nice. Okay, are there any questions about this? Okay. Uh, we still have 12 minutes, which means I have to do something in this time. 
So what I will do is I will get switch to green. And uh, we will try another one. So this one will be x, y prime minus 2x squared square root of y equals 4y. And in this one, I will not get things started for you. I will just let you give this a shot. Maybe as a hint, you, you, you might want to rearrange this a little bit before you start.
Okay, maybe I'll give this a shot in the last minute here. I'm just gonna say I'm going into this blind. I haven't tried this problem yet. So anyway. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, do a little rewriting. X, Y prime, first of all, minus four Y is equal to two X squared square root of Y. It'll divide through by X with Y prime. 4 over x, y to 2 x square root y, which I'll rewrite because it looks like I'm close to the final form of this as y to the 1. OK, so in this case, I have e of x is equal to negative 4 over x, u of x is equal to 2x. And R is equal to one half. So that gives me Y star is equal to e to the minus integral of, and that becomes positive, four over X dx. And this is, we get for this. Um, I'm going to make the assumption that x is positive. We could do something similar for if the possibility that x is negative. But we, of course, see that p of x here is only continuous um, away from 0. And so uh, we'll only consider x being always positive or always negative. So this just comes out to be x to the fourth. I agree with me on that. And let's see, what's next? All right, u prime has, what do we get for u prime? That's u to the r, u of x, and then my prime, so x. Are we still in agreement? Okay, great. No, I've done something wrong. I'm sure of this. Go back to the formula. Y prime to the R minus. So this should be two x and x to the fourth um, to the power of r minus one, so one half minus one, negative one half. So I'll rewrite this as two one half two x over the square root of x to the fourth squared. So this is u to the one half. x to minus 1. And then I'll write d to the x. OK, now I should have it right. So what I'll get is the integral of u to the minus 1 half du is equal to the integral of 2x minus 1 dx. And so what I will get here is u to the 1 half times 2 equal to 2 natural log of x. Again, I'm making the assumption. So, just cancel out. Get u is equal to natural log of x plus c 
squared. Again, I'm relying totally on And so finally, we get y, which is u, y star. This is natural log x. Natural log of x plus c squared x to the fourth. Now I will cheat. I will look at the notes, see if I got it right. And uh, happy to say that the notes agree. Somehow I always manage to go exactly to 11 places. Um, so on that note, I will say thank you for coming today. I hope you have a good weekend. Good luck with the exam. And I will see you. Unless you have questions.